The photographs allowed my chickens panic and nearly kill themselves flying against the coop. <laughs> All right, let's take it from the top again. One and two and. Uh, Joe, your beat's too slow. It ought to go. Da 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 how come you're the leader? Because I'm a chief. Well, why should you be chief? Because I'm wearing the white helmet. It was red. You just painted it white. <laughs> Listen, do you want to rehearse or do you want to discuss politics? <laughs> All right, now, let's take it from the top. One and two and... that since you started rehearsing, we've lost two paying guests. Mr. Wilson's still here. Yes, and I'd like him to stay here. So why don't you rehearse on the train while it's moving? That way you'll spread the punishment between Pixley and Uderville. We can't run the train while we're rehearsing. Floyd's using part of the air brake on his tuba. Yeah. <laughs> That sound like the cannonball slowing down for Dead Man's Curve? <laughs> hey, Dead Man's Curve. I'll say he's got a nerve. Who made him leader? Grandpappy. You... <laughs> Mr. Wilson! Mr. Wilson! <laughs> that did it. Kate, you gotta make some sacrifices. Don't you want us to have a fire department band? I think it'd be a smarter idea to have a fire department first. <laughs> That's what I've been saying right along. Well, how are you gonna equip a fire department without any money? That's the idea of the band. Give a concert, sell tickets. You don't think that anybody in their right minds would pay money to listen to what I've been suffering through tonight, including the loss of paying guests. <laughs> That's what I've been saying right along. I thought you'd been saying we need the fire department before we need the band. <laughs> and I still say it, and Kate's right. We won't make a nickel with this outfit. If people want to listen to noisy plumbing, they'd be better off staying home. <laughs> the trouble with you is, Sam, you ain't got no ear for music. The trouble is, I have. Fellas, fellas, all I'm trying to say is there's got to be a better way to raise money. Then let's see you come up with it. I'm resigning my fundraising genius and turning the leading stick over to you. Well, guess he laid that right in my lap. Yeah, I guess Ben is taking a nap. <laughs> We're going to need a mess of little cards to tack on the donation cans. The girls finished painting the cans yet? Just about, just about. And then we're going to put them in every store in town, the barber shop, the school. Kate, I'm sure glad you took over this fundraising. One thing the Valley needs is a fire department. Yeah, so far we've been pretty lucky. I suppose Joe's nose is still out of joint. <laughs> Way over to there. <laughs> All he does is sit around mumbling and grumbling. They don't want me to handle this, I won't handle it. I ain't one to grumble. They'll come a crying to me on their hands and knees when this thing fizzles out. Can't we paint these cans some other color besides red? It's supposed to represent the color of a fire engine. It's uh, psychological. Excuse me. Psychological? 
In my day, young ladies didn't use that kind of language. <laughs> What'd you see, Uncle Joe? Oh, nothing, nothing. Would you like to help us paint? No, thanks. I ain't getting mixed up in any penny ante fundraising schemes. If this had been left to me in no time at all, we'd have been whizzing along on the hook and ladder with a siren wide open. Well, when the cans are all nice and dry, do you want to help us distribute them? I'm sorry, girls. I'm washing my hands of the whole thing. <laughs> Hey, what's the matter with him? He's guarding the collection. Don't you know an honest face when you see one stupid? <laughs> yeah, I know how you can make a couple of quick bucks. Raffle him off as a dust mop. Uncle Joe, quit picking up. Oh, now you made me lose count. Oh, Mom, do I have to start all over again? Well... Mom, we've already counted them three different times. How much did it come to? Um... $62.48, cents, $62.21, $62.36. Why don't we just say $62.40 even? $62? That won't even buy a year's supply of pinochle decks for the volunteer. If you need professional help, I'll be around. Professional help? That's just what we could use. <laughs> Back so soon? Uh-huh. Sam agreed about getting professional help. And he gave me the name and address of a company who makes firefighting equipment. So could I borrow some of your good writing paper? Well, if you're going to write to them, why don't you dictate the letter to me? I could use the practice in shorthand. Yeah, but I never dictated a letter. Well, it's easy. All you do is you say what you'd write. Oh. Well, well, well why don't I write it first and then say it? Well, that'd be silly. <laughs> Just dictate what you were going to write. Well, I was going to write first the man's name and address. Okay. Mr. Henry Phillips, Trojan Fire Equipment Company. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, Mom. You got that all written? Sure, this is shorthand. Uh, dear Mr. Phillips. Okay. Well, now, you couldn't have written that. Sure, dear Mr. Phillips. That's what I said. Uh, you don't know me, but I live in Hooterville, a very nice little town in every respect except... We don't have a fire department. Sam Drucker told me you folks helped the fellas over at Squaw Creek set up their fire department. We can use all the help you gave them and then some. Kate Bradley, where's your civic pride? Writing to an outsider for help. Uncle Joe, we need help. Maybe you do, but I don't. I've been watching you knock your head against the stone wall. And I think it's about time I step back into the picture. Uncle Joe. Ride goeth before the fall, and I am here to pick you up. With that stale band concert? What would you say if I told you I could get a fully equipped fire department for that measly $62 you collected? I'd say you'd been nipping at my cooking sherry. <laughs> now, Go ahead, if you would... Kate, make us the laughing stock of the whole state. What's that outfit going to think when they learn you've only got $62 to spend on the whole shebang? How come you say you can get the equipment and they can't? Because I'm a fire chief. I'm entitled to the professional discount, and I'm not out to gouge a profit out of us like they are. Mom, I'm sure this Mr. Phillips will be glad to help out, but with only $62, I mean... Uncle Joe... Thanks, Kate. It takes a big person to admit she was plumb wrong. <laughs> I just don't understand how Kate could have let you do this. Because I told her I could get all our fire department equipment within the budget. Equipment? This is junk. <laughs> it's no wonder I'm chief. You fellas don't know the first thing about firefighting equipment. Just needs a little rehabilitating. <laughs> Listen, will you just help me inventory it and mark down the prices I paid? Now, here's one safety jumping net. That's Peck Cooper's tarpaulin he uses to keep his wood pile dry. How much did you give for that, Joe? I dickered him down to three dollars and eighty-five cents. Three dollars and he should have thrown in a cord of wood for that. An official firefighting searchlight, which I purchased from Lem Hoskins for fifty-five cents. It'll cost close to a dollar to get a bulb and batteries and a new glass for that. It's still a bargain. You show me where you can get an official firefighting searchlight for that kind of money. <laughs> How much did you pay for this? Two ninety-five. And I bought this hose. Who gypped you out at two ninety-five? Please, Sam. 
I bought this hose from it. One brand new axe, Joe Carson. <laughs> All it needs is a handle to make it new. Put one in, will you, Sam? Well, who's going to pay for it? You. Me. This is a volunteer fire department. You're volunteering it. <laughs> this lantern don't look too bad if you don't pick it up. <laughs> All it needs a little glue. How much you give me for this, Joe? Get out of the baggage compartment? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. It ain't loaded. Well, get it loaded and put it back. What would we do if there was a fire on the train? Call the volunteer fire department. <laughs> and the total cost spent for the firefighting equipment was $36, including a brand new axe I threw in. That's unbelievable. Oh, don't say that till you see it. And you still got $26 left? No, no, we spent that for the uh, fire alarms. Well, what kind of fire alarms could you get for $26? You'll see when they get here. $26 worth. Joe bought them from the Elks 4th of July picnic that got rained out. What for? They're, they're fire alarms. We give a sky rocket to each farmer in the valley. In case of a fire, he sends up the rocket, the volunteers see it and come running. Is that what you... Oh, I should have known better. Hey, the trouble with you is you don't think big. I am thinking big. In fact, what I am thinking is so big, I could go to the electric chair for it. <laughs> Floyd, tell Charlie to lay off oil in the engine and come and help us get this fireworks up the hotel. Hold it. You're not keeping this up at the hotel. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure I'm keeping you. Come on, Betty Jo. What are we going to do with it? Well, let's leave it in the Hooterville station temporary. Women, they just ain't practical. Hey, Joe. Have you still got those hand scratchings of that letter I dictated to Mr. Phillips? Yes, ma'am. Well, would you please type them up and mail them to him? Special delivery. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, young lady. Can you tell me how to get to the Shady Rest Hotel? Are you Mr. Phillips? Yes. I'm Betty Jo Bradley. Yeah. Mom got your letter and sent me to bring you up. Oh, do you have a car? Sure, right around the corner. Good. Volunteers, I'm about to sound the alarm. Get ready to wake up. <laughs> This ain't mine. That's mine. Hold it, hold it. By the time you get booted up, the whole town could burn down. Wouldn't it be easier if we slept in our boots? You want to do this professional or amateur? I don't want to do it at all. I want to get back to my store. Why don't we get one of them brass poles the firemen slide down? Where are you going to get a brass pole? Well, there's one up in Pixley and the speakeasy they closed up during Prohibition. I don't know whether it's any good or not. It's lying on its side. It's lying on its side? Well, if you're so smart, you find one that's standing up. We're going to stand here, John, all day. Now get them boots off and let's try waking up again. And this time, put more zip in the drill. There's not going to be any more pounding up and down the stairs drilling in this hotel. Oh, okay. And I don't know what you're doing it for anyway. Mr. Phillips will be here today to take charge. Oh, that's why we had to rush over here. You knew he was coming. You were afraid he'd show you up. Yeah, he wants to be the big cheese. 
What does this Phillips know? He's an expert. He manufactures fire equipment. We don't want any outsiders a meddling in our affairs. No, we got you to meddle in them. <laughs> Look, if you don't want me to be the chief, all you got to do is just say so. We don't want you to be chief. <laughs> Lucky thing I can take your kidding. I wasn't kidding. I'll accept your apology. <laughs> now let's get on with a hook and ladder drill. When you said car, I thought you meant a... <laughs> this is the only kind of car that could take us to Shady Rest. Uh, care to share a handle with me? Delighted. <laughs> okay, by the numbers. One. <laughs> two. <laughs> What's the sense in having a hook and ladder drill if you ain't got somebody to carry down the ladder? It's not going to be me. Hi, Uncle Joe. Betty Joe, would you like to volunteer your services to be carried down a ladder? No, thank you. <laughs> Mom, your guest is here. Nobody wants to help. <laughs> Who are you? Well, how do you do? Chief, my name is Phillips. Oh, you're the outsider who's going to tell us how to run the fire department. Oh, no. No, sir, I'm not going to tell you how to run it. I'm just here to help you in any way I can. You really want to help? Well, of course I do. Hey! Oh! Help! 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 What in the name of... Help! It sounds like Mr. Phillips. Well, come on. Help! Help! That's right, Mr. Phillip. Act panic struck. Team act. Joe, this is the silliest. Well, he wanted to help, didn't he? That's your big city fire expert. Afraid he'll fall out of a second story window. Don't worry, you're in the capable hands of the Hooterville Fire Department. Help! Help me! Heck, let go, I told you, let go! Floyd, pull him back in! I can't! Where's Charlie with the ladder? This is all I could find of it. <laughs> For crying out loud. Where's that tarpaulin? Help! Oh, there it is. Help! My man! Panic, Kate. I'm in charge. Help! Girls, give us a hand. Lloyd, hang on to him. I'm doing the best I can. Help! All right, steady, man. Everybody brace themselves. Stop bouncing him! Th that chicken broth's better for you than a shot of penicillin. It'll take that wobbly feeling out of your legs. Well, I am a little better. I, I sure hope you didn't mean all those things you yelled about taking legal action against the fellas. Well, I did at the time. And then you saved my life. Oh, all I did was stop them from bouncing you. No, no. I meant after that, when you prevented them from giving me artificial respiration. <laughs> well, you can see what we're up against trying to organize a fire department. You know, Mrs. Bradley, I've been thinking. You know that train? The cannonball? Yes. That train might well solve your firefighting problems. Well, if it's going to cost any money, forget it. You know, money isn't always the answer, Mrs. Bradley. Perhaps we can work out a barter arrangement. I now christen the fire engine train number one. <laughs> got chicken broth all over the tender. Oh, quit complaining, Floyd. If it hadn't been for Kate's chicken broth, Mr. Phillips would never have donated that pump and hose. Yeah, that was a pretty smart deal I made with him. You made? Why, he wouldn't even talk to you after he fell out of the window. Yeah, Kate's the one that made the arrangements to send him a jar of chicken broth every month in exchange for the equipment. Now, well, let's get on with the rest of the dedication ceremony. Folks! Standing in front of the Hooterville station, 25 miles away, Newt Kiley is waiting to light the same kind of fire alarm rocket your fire department is going to distribute to every farm and home in the valley. Newt will set off his rocket at precisely 8 o'clock, indicating a false alarm fire. A 
Upon seeing the signal, the members of the Hooterville Fire Department will spring into action, jump on fire department train number one, and race to the scene of the false alarm fire and let on like they're putting it out. In the meantime, you'll be serenaded with several selections by the Hooterville Volunteer Fire Department Band. I thank you. You know, Mom, I think this rocket idea of Uncle Joe's kind of makes sense. We'll see. Hold it, Floyd. This is no time to practice. I ain't practicing. I'm just seeing that the air brake valve's working. I'm ready. ready. One and two and... and calmly walk to the train. Look, there's another one. That darn fool, Newt. He was only supposed to light one. Once aboard the train, the engineer will... I think that last one must have been an aerial bomb. That Newt, nobody told him to haul all that fireworks out of the station and set it off. I got a strange feeling he didn't haul it out of the station. <laughs> it's the real thing. Follow me, men. Wait for me. Come on, girls. Let's start some coffee brewing. They're going to need it. Oh, can't we stay and watch? It's beautiful. It's just like the 4th of July. Must be coming. I didn't hear the whistle. Well, he can hear it for miles. It's morning. They've been out all night. Say, we better heat up the coffee and warm up those donuts we made, huh? Train? <laughs> Maybe he was dreaming. <coughs> nope, that's his train bark. Mom! <laughs> This is a cannonball. Then what happened to the train? I couldn't stop it, and it ran off the end of the track at Hooterville. Floyd left the air brake part here on his tuba. At least the fire pump worked, Kate. We hooked up the hose, turned it on, and you should have seen that stream of water squirting out. It's too bad it didn't run off the track closer to the fire. <laughs> you, you mean the station? You didn't save any of it? Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.